So we were talking about uh, variable declarations. And uh, we have, uh, uh, as, as you mentioned, uh, three different ways uh, of declaring a new variable in, uh, in JavaScript. Let, const, and var. No? Let's start from the easy ones uh, that are let and const. Um, we declare a variable by uh, assigning it, by initializing it with a normally initial value. So we try to avoid declaring variable without, variables without initializing them. And the difference between a let and a const, as the name says, that the const cannot be changed later on because it's a constant, basically. No? So the reference, the, the pure reference, that is the variable b, is a constant reference. It means that you cannot change that reference later on. Uh, a is a reference that can be changed later on with an assignment uh, instruction when you want it. Okay, so if we uh, maybe try to open the sorry, wait, the Python Tutor page, sorry, this is, the, the website is Python Tutor, but it has a JavaScript uh, mod. Okay, we can declare a variable uh, let a. No, it equal to six, whatever, and we show that I'm declaring a variable a with, var with value six, or I can declare a variable b with value two. Yes, uh, enter. So I'm writing fragments of JavaScript program. Right now, I'm leaving out the semicolons, but I could put there the semicolons and the, the meaning will be the same. Uh, in this case, the semicolon it was, uh, in the first example, was automatically added because uh, six followed by let is not a valid syntax. Let cannot be part of an expression. And so that was the marking point of the beginning of a new instruction. But, uh, I, I prefer not to rely on that. Okay, uh, means that if I want to change B later on with uh, something else, I can do that freely. And uh, the the Python tutor, the JavaScript tutor, will show me that the new value after execution of the program has uh, taken over the old one. Or can I also have expression like B equal to B plus A, B, C, D, and uh, they will be concatenated and create a new value. Okay, nothing strange. But if I try to assign a new value to variable A, I will get an error. Uh, which is, of course, uh, not the right one. Sorry, no, I, okay, it works. I, I, I thought I was declared with, with const, okay. Um, if I declare, okay, uh, A with the letter, I can change it. If I declare A with a const declaration, I could uh, see the initial value, six. In the, if I try to change it later on, I will get an error, assignment to constant variable. Okay. I cannot change the reference. Once I assign a const variable to a value, that const value variable will always point to that value. Right now we have only strings and numbers. But when we see more complex values, uh, a const um, variable means that the value may change, but the reference cannot change. Right. We see that when we see uh, only when we'll see arrays. Okay, when I can, if a would point at an array, I can even if it's a const. A will if it's a const, a will always point to the same array. I can change the content of the array, but a, anyway, a will always point to that. So we'll block the reference to the object that it's currently pointing to, but it doesn't prevent changing the, uh, the, 
the content of the object. It means that const, const works on the variable, not on the value. OK? It's a bit. Uh, uh, in uh, with numbers and strings, uh, we don't see the difference. We cannot see the difference between because the, uh, numbers and strings are immutable types. Once I write six, I cannot change it. I cannot change the value of a number. I could create a new number and assign the variable to the new number. Um, but more on immutability later on. So basically, normally uh, we use. Uh, let to declare a variable, a const to declare a variable. Is more some some sources try to suggest to use as much as possible const for declaring your variables. Um, just to avoid uh, not changing the, the value inadvertently. And if you really need to change it, uh, you you can then switch a const declaration to let. So the default uh, tends to use. Uh, Tends to be using const for declaring new variables. You can declare variables everywhere, uh, except maybe values that you can use into inside the loop, uh, and so you need to update every iteration. Then, of course, uh, um, you you could declare that with less. But but, but remember that let and const that we will see in a, in a moment uh, are uh, scoped at the block level. So inside the loop, at every iteration, you, you are redeclaring re them from scratch. So you can also always also declare them as a const inside the loop. But we we'll see some examples later. I don't want to, to be dig too much into the theory here. Um, var behaves uh, in a similar way to let, uh, in that the variable that we are declaring can be changed later on. Okay. We are declaring variable c with initial value 7. Then later on, c will be assigned to 10. There is no error with that. So what's the difference between let and var, which is a real question. These are the different like the table trying to compare the different ways of declaring a variable. Okay, so let and const, you see that they are identical. Now we, we then we're the content, but we see that they are identical except for being able to reassign the same variable to a new value, yes or not. Okay, and then all say, okay, remember, you cannot change assignment, but you can change the value of the object that you are currently pointing to. Right now, we can we don't know how to do that because we don't know arrays or objects yet, but in a moment we will. Uh, can we declare? No. Means that the same variable, once you declare it, you cannot declare it a second time. So if I write again, uh, let b equal to law, and if I wrote let, B equal to A, B, C, D. That would be an error because I'm trying to redeclare the variable B. Identifier B has already been declared. Okay. Uh, just in this way, we can avoid uh, no, name clashes uh, or something like that. So we declare a variable and we use it uh, later on. We can reassign it if it's a if it's not a const. Uh, with the same name. If we try to assign a variable without declaring it, C, we have an error. Okay, the error of course is wrong because this interpreter is just C is not defined. So we, when we try to use or even to assign a new vari a variable which has not been declared before, it's an error. Okay. So declaration is, is mandatory, and it can only be done once before the first usage of the variable. Um, scope of the declaration, let and const, is the enclosing block. So when we have structure statements uh, with for and if and uh, braces, uh, any variable that you declare inside a brace will only last uh, for that block. Okay? So at the end of the block, the variable will be forgotten. So imagine if you have a for, a loop, or a while, if you're declaring something inside that loop, it will disappear at the end of the iteration and will recreate it at the beginning of the new iteration. That's why you can also use const inside, inside the loops, because every loop will create its own fresh copy of the variable. That you want it or not, even if you declare it with let, it will be destroyed and recreated at the next iteration. Because when you iterate, you are exiting from a block and entering again from the 
block of the next iteration. The difference with var, okay, from the can be reassigned, yes, like that. So we can update a variable or a, or a var variable. We can redeclare it. This is a bit strange. I can use var x equal to seven, and uh, later on uh, we declare var x equal to nine. And it's oh, it was an error. I didn't show it before, and it's working. So it doesn't complain whether the same variable is declared more than once. This is a bit of a warning sign because if I'm writing var, probably in my mind, I want to create a new variable. And so it doesn't warn me that uh, I'm reusing an identifier that was already declared probably for something else. But this is a bad behavior. Something that puts more responsibility to the programmer and less to the interpreter. So, but this can be done for historical reasons. And uh, uh, the other big difference is the, the scope of this declaration is not the block in which it is declared, but is the full function in which it lives. And if you don't have a function, it's the full file. And uh, it means that if I declare something uh, if uh, mm, I don't know a is greater than five, then var y is uh, nine. Okay, and then I declare a variable uh, uh, let z equal to y, for example. So I'm declaring a variable inside the block here. Uh, if a is a 6, so it should be true. What did they write it? OK. And so z as takes the, the, why is that? OK, I need to enter. It sometimes doesn't uh, update immediately. Okay, next. Okay, something, sorry. That's uh, just uh, the, this editor that, uh, but the idea, that, uh, next we, we move to the Visual Studio Code uh, to, to have a more complete environment. It is just, uh, this was just helpful because you can change it, but uh, it's not, uh, you should be able to execute this line, but for some reason it doesn't. Okay. Um, Okay, okay. Um, so the idea is that this variable of y that has been created inside the block is also visible outside the block. Okay, we can live with that. The other strain behavior is that you can use a var even before declaring that. You see that x is 9. I'm assigning to x the number 7. And I'm declaring x only later. What happens is that there's a mechanism that is called hoisting, which is very strange, very specific to JavaScript. What JavaScript does is that whenever you have a, um, a function context, or a file context if you, have, you don't have a function, the interpreter scans for every declaration of war, var. Any declaration of var that may happen inside the function, even in nested blocks. And all of these declarations are hoisted, lifted up at the beginning, conceptually. It's like we say we, this one was written at the first instruction. So all the declaration of the, all the, var, or the var variables inside the function are taken at the first line. Only the declaration, not the initialization, not the nine part, only the var x part. And so all the variables that have been declared anywhere inside the function, or inside the file if you don't have a function, are automatically defined at the first line. You can use 
be used throughout the function, even before the real point of declaration. And so the actual declaration just becomes uh, an assignment because the variable is already declared. It's strange. Mm. It's not uh, it's not a behavior that we are familiar with from other languages. Huh? It's legacy behavior from JavaScript. We may like to use it sometimes, uh, especially when, we, when, when maybe we are using some function, we want to call a function, but we only want to define the function later on because in our code, we want to have the main function, then the secondary ones below. And so we may use this mechanism, this hoisting mechanism. Pull at the beginning of, of the function or of the file, this declaration. It's not something that we would like to rely on, so we are not accustomed to work or think in this way. That's why mm, the suggestion would be, let's try to stick with let and const. Let's try to prefer const. Uh, or let, uh, which are, which are let's say, more predictable in, in terms of behavior. Okay, so that's why it's not forbidden. We see a lot of code that uses var, but just be aware that uh, if we want, if you want to use the, this variable in a normal way, like you would do in other languages, uh, then let is more predictable for us. Mm -hmm. There was also an implicit definition, so just assign a variable without declaring it, uh, which is now forbidden in strict mode. So basically, this line, we will never see it. Hmm? There was even more dangerous because defining a variable without a declaration automatically defined it at the global level, not just the functional level. So you can imagine this was the uh, initial problems of the language that was implemented in 10 days. OK. Um, OK, this was. Apart from this uh, strange declaration of variables, so the rest flows quite easily. Uh, so expressions are what you actually expect. Uh, you can have all the expressions that are copied basically from those of uh, of C or Java. That are, but with the primary, with the primitive uh, values, uh, the expression are quite predictable. You have the assignment statement, uh, the equal to assign an expression to a variable. This means computing the expression and changing the reference of the variable to point to the new value representing the result of the expression. We are not storing the value inside the variable. OK, so if in your mind uh, you think that the variable is still a box uh, in which you're writing a value, forget the model. A variable is just a pointer that points to a value that which is somewhere else. No, you are, we are following the object model of, of all object-oriented languages to, to the end, to the, to the full extent. So values we live in their uh, universe, and variables are just little arrows, little pointers. We use the term references to these values. So an assignment means compute an expression. It will compute a, a value, of an object that holds the value of the result of the expression, and then update the reference to this value. What we call, we are changing the variable to point to a new value. We are not changing the value of the variable. Okay? Sorry if I insist, but it's trying to uh, disassemble and reassemble your mind in a different way. Uh, of course, if I have a let uh, declaration, basically we are first declaring the variable and then assigning it to the first value. So there's initialization and declaration put together in the form of an expression statement. And we have all the, uh, let's say, combined uh, assignments uh, like we have in other, you know, in C, for example, like plus, plus equal, uh, times equal, and so on, uh, all the so combined uh, operator hmm? that we expect. Comparison operators, we already uh, saw that we have an equal and a triple equal, which is the preferred way to do comparison. And we have all the others uh, not equal and not equal without. Uh, um, type conversions, not equal equal, is the operator we try to remember to use. And then there are all the others, greater, less than, and so on, which don't have a, a, a double equal version. Mm -hmm. mm, nothing strange. Um, we are, JavaScript is an object-oriented language, so when we do a comparison, we are comparing the references to the objects. This is 
it equal to all uh, object oriented programming language. So if you have two objects that contain identical values, they don't need to be equal. Equality means that the reference of variable one is identical to the reference of variable two. Both references point to the same object. Okay. Uh, in the case of primitive types, numbers and strings, uh, the interpreter will collapse identical values into single objects. So, for example, uh, like we said before, ABCD as a string uh, will be equal to ABCD as a string. Uh, because uh, we only have one instance of every string, so basically we are creating an object of that string, we are creating another string where, that is identical to the first, we, so they will be merged, and the two references will point to the same, to the same uh, value. This only happens for uh, predefined values, for primitive types. In the case we have arrays or we have objects, they are not uh, necessarily the same, okay? Uh, so we have one, one, two is an array. Is it equal to one, two? No. Okay, because we didn't see the, the, the array syntax yet, but we can understand it quite easily. We are creating one object, which is an array that we have been given content. Then we have, we are creating another object that by chance, uh, happens to have the same value, but they are two separate, two different objects. And the equality operator doesn't compare the object that array one equals to one, two, and we see it right here. We have a variable that points to a data structure. If we create another data structure, a two with uh, three, four, of course, it will be a different object pointed by a different reference. If I'm writing 1, 2 instead of 3, 4 here, actually I'm changing the numbers there. But I'm creating a new object. This expression will create an a new object. Since it's not a primitive type, it will be a separate object. Yeah. Now we see why a1 uh, let result whether a1 equal to a2 is false. Okay. So, but this in Java, you to compare two strings, you would use uh, equals because in Java, a string is an object. In uh, JavaScript, a string is a primitive type, so you can use the equal operator onto strings, not onto arrays, not to, to other objects. You need to create your own equality operators. Okay, so just be aware that you are working with, with references like uh, other uh, programs. We are so used to, um, to JavaScript that com do, does all the conversion for us that sometimes we forget that behind that uh, we have an object model. Um, this last try to I don't I do want to study it, uh, but uh, in detail. But uh, um, turns out that there are some automatic type conversions. Remember when you said the uh, double equal or the plus? I said okay, but before um, uh, doing the the actual operation, some conversions are are made. Huh? Um, and so usually. There is a hierarchy from number to floating point number to string, even from array to string, from object to string, it will try to convert to something that can be operated on. And normally, string is something that can cover everything. Okay, so uh, and in a lot of places, uh, uh, JavaScript will convert uh, your expression to a string it, if it cannot do the operation with the current type. Uh, and this is happening automatically behind the scenes. You can have, you don't have control to that. You know? uh, this conversion between primitive types, of course. Uh, sometimes we want to do some explicit conversion, and these are some different syntaxes for doing that. Uh, 
for example, if we have uh, any type and we want to convert it to a Boolean, we can call the Boolean function, and we convert it, uh, or uh, just uh, a double negation. Okay. So a double negation will take uh, the first uh, exclamation mark will negate the value, and if the value, if it was a string, for example, and if the string uh, was uh, uh, empty, the negation of the empty string is true, because the empty string itself is false. It's not false. It's a different value. It's an empty string, but it's considered false. And so if you negate it twice, you get uh, the false value, because the negation of true, and so on. So it's a bit of no, stretching the syntax, uh, forgetting. So these are some instructions that you see. If you have a string, you want to convert it to a number, you can use the parse int or parse float, which are function for doing that, or the, the trick would be making plus s, the unary plus. Can, that can only be applied to numbers. And so if it has a string, it just will first try to convert to a number, and, uh, and then the operator does nothing, doesn't change the value. It only makes it positive, OK? So there are tricks like that. Um, usually, if we have a, a, a number we want to convert to a string, you can just take the number and concatenate an empty string. It will trigger the conversion to the number of the string. You see a lot of code like that. And so you see, you're, normally, you wonder, what is this code doing? It's trying to do an implicit trigger an implicit conversion. Of course, uh, there's also the explicit way, string, boolean, string, number, that I would prefer to use uh, the explicit way so that we say what we are doing. But uh, over the decades, uh, no, there was a lot of uh, just idioms that were created. Logical operators are very powerful, and we use them a lot in, um, in, in React, and or not. But uh, the way they work, is not they are not saying expression 1 and expression 2 are Boolean values, and they will return a Boolean value. No. The definition of an end is uh, it returns the expression 1 if it can be converted to false, if it's falsy. Otherwise, it returns expression 2. Strange. So if the first expression is false, then it returns false. If the expression 1 is uh, zero, then it returns zero. If expression one is uh, seven, it returns expression two. Okay, this can be used uh, for some short circuit operations. Um, remember that for converted to false, what we call falsy, is uh, uh, also undefined, is also the empty string. So, for example, the, the or is more useful, okay? Uh, you say, imagine you have a, let's, let's write some example programs. New file, so we, we see how to run them. Compare.js, okay? I'm writing a pro instead of writing that inter interactively right now I'm writing a use strict a, a file and I will execute it we, so we see also another way of, of executing so we are, we are switching environments uh, just for the sake of knowing that and uh, I want I have a, a, a name no last name the user input uh, and the user inputs uh, a value. This name. And we want to print a value, but also take into account that this name may be empty. So, what we would do normally is that if the user input is empty, if user input is empty, Okay, then uh, we use a default value, user input uh, equal to default. 
otherwise we keep the name okay so we can print and in javascript uh, printing is an uh, it's, um, as a method of the console object uh, like in java system.out it's a output console in uh, in, uh, in JavaScript, it's called console, dot, which has a method log that prints a line on the console. Console, you find it here. Uh, this is our input. So if we run this program, and in VS Code, we go to the run click here, run onto node, it will print ABC because, of course, the input was a real name. But if the input was empty, this code will print, uh, print default. OK, mm -hmm. we can expect it. Another way of writing the same thing, which is more an, or an idiom in JavaScript that uh, exploits the strange usage of Boolean operators, is to write uh, that uh, the user input equal user input or default so let's try to parse it with the minimum of the or operator returns the expression one if it can be converted to true this is the or not the end otherwise it's return to expression two so expression one can be converted to true. Expression one is the name of the, user, the value of the user input, which is a string. Can be converted to true if it's not the empty string. So if it's not the empty string, this expression will return user input unchanged. If it's the empty string, it will return the second parameter. So we embedded a sort of an if statement here. Uh, and the end uh, would be for uh, uh, returning a value only if another value is zero or different by zero. Um, and uh, so it's the reverse. We in uh, this op uh, we'll, we'll see a lot of this in uh, when we do React when we are using the and or for uh, making parts of the page appear or disappear based on some boolean values. And we save a lot of ifs uh, in 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 the in the meantime. So it's a bit strange to see that at the beginning a nor between two strings. Uh, but it's actually leveraging the fact that the result uh, of a nor operator is not a boolean value, but it's either the first or the second value. And uh, truth or truth in, truthiness of, or falseness is only completed on the first element, not on the, on the second one, using the regular truthiness or falseness conversion in JavaScript. So zero, empty string, null, undefined are false. Considered false or can be converted to false. So uh, there are quite regular operators, but uh, due for to, so some details tend to be used in a, say, strange ways. Okay, these are normal operators. Plus, minus, uh, increment and decrement, and something, uh, nothing, nothing new. We have the ternary operator, the conditional operator. That you may remember it from, from C, where they told you not don't use it because it's confusing. It exists in Java, they told you don't use it because it's consuming, confusing. It exists in JavaScript where we are telling it don't use it because it's consuming, but you will use it a lot, okay? Um, because, uh, especially in, in React, uh, when, again, we are trying to compact it some, to some expressions, a series of condition or variation of the, of the interface according to some condition. So something that uh, for readability, it would be not very uh, commendable, we use it for compactness. But of course, let's try again, always to be mm, as ordered as possible in our code, especially when we are trying to use these shortcuts that the language would permit us. Okay, we have a mathematical library. I don't want to spend more than one second on that with all the functions that you need. Control structures, again, are nothing new. If, uh, switch, uh, 
The difference between C or Java and uh, JavaScript is that every time you see a Boolean expression, there will always be this, this implicit conversion. If it's not a Boolean, I will check whether it's truthy or false. Okay? So we can exploit this behavior, but we must be aware of that. A switch expression uh, may also be uh, um, a string. So we can compare with strings, not just with numbers, like it happens with, uh, with C, for example. A loop statement is similar to the C loop, uh, a for with three fields. And normally, in the first field, we, defi we define uh, the loop variable, let uh, i equal to 0, uh, because it's a new variable that we want to, we want to make up in the, in the part. And uh, the scope of the initial variable is pushed into the scope of the, of the for statement. Uh, we also have the do while and the while, so they copied basically the, the control structure from C. Um, there are two special types of force. Uh, in particular, this one, the right for variable of iterable iter and iterable object may be financially maybe a, an array mm -hmm. or other type of data structure. So in this case, it will iterate over the values of an array. Okay. You may be familiar with uh, Java that uh, uses a semicolon. For string s, semicolon, a list of string. And we'll iterate no, at the read. Or with Python that uses in. For v in list. And this is called of. Just to make our mind bend a little more. Okay. Uh, but the semantics is the same. At every iteration, the variable points to a different element of the array. We don't see the index of the array, we only see the value. There's also an in, a for in statement that is very seldom used because it iterates over the properties of an object. So if you have an object, uh, for example, this is a point object with a property x and y. The for of will uh, take all the values uh, of the different properties of the same object. It's not very used because you know an object may have different properties of different types. And if you only have the values one after the others, uh, you don't know what to do with this value. Hmm? So um, it's very it's not very useful, except maybe inside some libraries when you do some reflection over the properties of your own objects. Uh, and the, uh, the the useful one is, is this one. But just remember to use of because it may become more natural to use in and it will do the, the wrong thing. Hmm? So no, don't use with, with arrays. Uh, there are other methods for iterating, especially over data structures, uh, that comes with uh, functional programming. Hmm? Uh, in many cases, we will avoid using uh, for loops for iterating over arrays uh, because we will use the functional programming for applying a function to every element of the array. Okay? It's not something for today, but just for, to warn you that the normal idiom in JavaScript to process an array is not with a for loop, uh, but with a map uh, function that transforms every element into something else thanks to an auxiliary function. It's something that we need some time to, to learn. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Troy catch is a normal statement copied from, from Java for uh, handling exceptions. And that's it. Basically, the, 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 con the control structure of the language for if and while and switch and try set are nothing new. No, there are no surprises. There. Something more interesting would be arrays. I would say that arrays and uh, functions are the two cornerstones of JavaScript. They make the language look like what it is, especially functions. Um, arrays are a predefined uh, object type inside the library, the standard library. So out of the box, you have already a lot of functionalities. It's uh, more similar to a Python list, we'll say. It's a container of a variable number of elements, and each element may have a different type. There is no, con there are no constraints over the types of the objects. Creating an array in line is very easy because you just have to 
put some elements into square brackets. Uh, and the elements can be modified and also can be added or removed at any time without changing the variable, uh, the, um, the reference to the, to the array itself. There's a one property length of the array, of course, uh, which is just, just be aware that length is a property, is not a method. Okay, so it's, it doesn't have the parentheses for calling the method. Uh, just array dot length uh, stop without the parentheses. It's strange, but uh, um, uh, see we are arrays are objects. We all know what are uh, what objects are. Uh, whenever we want to change an object, the value of an object, we always have two options. We can change some property of the objects without creating new objects, so a modification in place of some properties. Or we can create a new object that copies all the values and with some of them modified, updated. And of course, they are, the, the, the resulting value is equivalent, but the references are different. OK, so we always must be aware, pay attention, whether the methods that we are using are modifying the data structure, the array, in place, or whether they're creating a new array. It may seem a detail, but it's very important when these arrays, these references, are passed down to a, letter, to a set of functions in which you risk of losing the reference to the original array, and you modify something locally when you actually wanted to modify something uh, globally. Uh, so the syntax. So uh, let's keep in mind, every time we see a method or a function working on arrays, always ask ourselves, does it this modify the array or does this create a new one? OK, uh, okay. The, the easy part is creating an array, just uh, putting some values uh, in square brackets, uh, values of different types. The array only contains the references to these values. values. And these values may have different types as any other value of, of, of the language. Hmm? Um, in the JavaScript tutor, we see that uh, we already saw the example before. We have a, the reference that points to the, the array object, and the array object contains the values. Um, the length of an array is automatically updated whenever we add new elements. So we see that I'm creating an empty array. I'm putting something into element 0. But element 0 didn't exist. So it's been created for me. So I don't need uh, to create the element and then to fill it. I, just, I can just assign a value to the first uh, three position in the array. And this position is created in the array is extended automatically. I'm saying to the first position, because if I try to assign later, then what comes in the middle positions uh, is not clear. No? Will be a, a lot of undefined values that we try to avoid. But for extending a variable, uh, sorry, for extending an array, it's just a matter of uh, assigning it to the first uh, three positions, and the length will be increased automatically, and the value. So it's not an error to assign to a position that doesn't exist. You may, like, you may like it or not, depends on how you are you thinking of as, as programming. But uh, There's also a more explicit syntax uh, for doing that, because here, from this code, it's not clear whether I'm overwriting a value or I'm extending the array. Uh, there's also a method called push that is explicitly appends, adds uh, a new value at the end of the array. So if you want to be more explicit, uh, you can use the push method. The effect, of course, is the same. We extend the array of, our, of one element, and we put uh, this value into the newly created element. Uh, and we have four methods for that. Uh, adding at the end is called push. Adding at the beginning is called unshift. Removing at the end is called pop, and removing at the beginning is called shift. So an array is just an array 
that can be indexed with sorry i didn't say that can be indexed with with integral number from zero to length minus one so you can use it normally as an array but you can use also as a q a five for q if you insert one on one side and extract from the other or a live for q if you are pushing and popping from the same from the same side of the array so the same data structure can be used in different ways as a stack as a queue as a, an array so you had a question Linear. It's a linear complexity. Yes, because internally strings uh, arrays are mapped into us. Low level arrays, not lists. So for uh, shifting and unshifting, all the other elements should be shifted by one, one position. But the references only. The objects don't move. Yes, it's one array of references. And if you, see, if you delete the first one, then all the other references need, need to be moved by one position. At the first level, I mean, I'll, um, at the first approximation. Then what we do with the, what the JavaScript interpreters do are very sophisticated operations. So in many cases, they can rewrite our code in a different way because uh, JavaScript is not interpreted one instruction at a time, but is compiled to an intermediate code, and then that is executed. So, some of the operation may be um, may be uh, optimized in a different way. But we see we are not we don't we are not so afraid of uh, linear time operations, because all the functional programming that we will see will work by copying, making new copies of the arrays every time. Uh, we want to modify something and may seem at, at, uh, let's say a time a performance of a red but actually is a bug saver so if you are creating different copies of immutable data structures you have much less bugs but it's something for later so there will be operations that of course are not very efficient we know that the the executor uh, does a lot of optimizations but the basic uh, data structure are not uh, optimized if you want to do that, maybe you can use other data structures like maps, for example, that, or lists. But normally, they are defined in the, in the standard libraries. But normally, we just use arrays. They are, they are enough. Of course, arrays are objects. We said we already saw that uh, the variable referring to an array is separated from the array value itself. And this means that uh, for copying arrays, uh, we should not just copy the reference. Okay, if I'm creating an array, let's go again to the here. Okay, array one is one, two, three, four. And I want to create a copy of this array, B1 equal to A1, A1. This can be written, but the result is there. Both variables are now referring, pointing to the same object. So of course, if I change uh, the, the second element of A1 to 100, it will change uh, the second element of that unique value. Object. We are accessing the value through variable A1, through reference A1. You could access, access the same value through B2. Okay? So uh, every time we assign uh, this normal object oriented programming, every time we assign a reference to an object to a new variable, we are creating an alias, a different way of referring to the same object. Mm -hmm. uh, if we don't want that, we should use methods for creating actual physical copies of the array. And for example, in uh, for arrays, there is a, fr a from method, a static method for the, for the array function that will create a new array from an existing iterable object. There may be another array. So if you really want to create a new copy, we should use a, or one. There are different, syntaxes, different possible syntax. One is this from function. Um, for iterating of arrays, uh, like we said, uh, we can use the for of operator. 
or we can use a traditional for by incrementing the index for i equal to zero, i plus plus, i minus, i minus array dot length. Or we will learn uh, next time how to use the functional operator that automatically, you know, uh, iterate over the elements and do some operation every each of them. And then we have a bunch of uh, other functions that are already predefined on the array object. And this means that we, we really, there are very few cases in which you really have to go element by element. Huh? Uh, concatenation of two strings, or two arrays, sorry. Hmm? Joining two arrays. The join operator creates a string by joining the elements of the array. And if they are numbers, they are converted to string, and then they are concatenated with a separator, for example. Slicing extracts a section of the string. And uh, just see that in this slide, I outlined in bold the word new or the word in place. Okay, And this is the difference between methods that return a new array, so don't modify the existing one, or methods that modify the existing array and don't create a new reference, not, don't create a new object. So you will see that in some cases there are um, methods that seem duplicated in a way. So I can extract a session of an array with a slice method. And there's another method which is called splice, which is a complex method that can remove some elements from a, um, an array and insert some new ones in their place. So maybe you have an array, you want to remove the two middle ones and insert one or 17 elements in their place, just in one call. OK, you say array dot splice, the position, how many elements you want to delete, and what you want to insert in their place if you want to insert anything. And you see that if we don't add anything, the splice method is very similar to slice, that leaves only a part of the initial string. The difference is the slice creates a new string, and the splice modifies, removes elements from that single string. So if you see that there are very sim a lot of uh, functions that are similar, that there are similar versions, or they can be used in similar context, but one of them creates a new value, and the other modifies uh, in place. And we show uh, this is the first thing that we should look at when we look at the documentation, because otherwise we um, it's a mix of them. In functional programming, which is one of the preferred methods of programming in, in JavaScript and is with the, the mandatory programming style in React, we tend always to create new objects and never modify existing objects. Every time we create something new, and so we can apply new functions on that. Hmm? Um, OK, last, uh, no. The slide will be for Thursday because I want to play a bit uh, uh, with this function, with the arrays, uh, and then see some, some specific things. How do you compare to the array style synchronization? Comparing array, you go element by element. Yes. There's, there's no equal operator. Yeah, I, I would have to. There is no primitive operator for comparing the equality of the strings. No. There's no, no. You go element by element, or you convert to something. But I would hate converting to strings. Yeah.